Hello. Was was that a little bit scary? <laughs> I'm sure it was a bit. Okay, so let's get into it. So we got geometric sequences or geometric progressions. And I mean, just what looks like a key difference in this sequence, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, as opposed to the arithmetic progression we we're looking at before. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? I'm interested to hear what, <laughs> to read what you write. Um, but, I mean, it's clearly doubling, right? And the other one was adding the same amount each time. So A is still our first term. So what's the first term in this sequence? Okay, well, it's 5. There it is. There we can see it. And the ratio is how what you're multiplying each term by to get to the next. So what are, what is R? In other words, what is 5 multiplied to get... What is 5 multiplied by to get to 10? And what is 10 multiplied to get to 20? What is 20 multiplied by to get to 40? Well, in that jumble, bumble, jumble, hopefully you got the idea that R is 2. And let's see how we could work that out quite systematically. We could say, well, let's take the second term. So if we took 10 and we divided it by 5, we can see what we're multiplying by. So if it I wasn't in the way. So 10 over 5 is 2. 10 over 5 is 2. 20 over 10 is 2. 40 over 20 is 2. So in other words, you're multiplying by 2 each time. So you'll sometimes see maybe T2 over T1. Well, that's the value of R. One term divided by the term just before it. Okay, so quick pause. Okay, so we've got our pause and hopefully things are going well. Uh, so let's see what happens in general. In general, if we looked at it uh, algebraically, if we had our first term as A, and we're multiplying by our common ratio, so we're multiplying by R, what would our second term be in general? Well, it's AR. And then if we multiplied that by R again, what would our third term be? Well, it's a times r times r, so a times r squared. So now if we look at it and go, well, this is t1, this is t2, this is t3. Then for tn, so in general, we've got a times, well, let's look. t2 was a r, so like a r to the 1. t3 is a r squared. So tn is a r to the power of what? Well, to the n minus 1. Because look, when it was 3, it was 2. I keep on having to move around here. When it was t2, it was 1. When it was t1, well, it's ar to the 0, I guess. So there's our general formula. It is given to you, but we can work it out from there. So let's go through, I think there are two examples like this, and then two more complicated examples. So I'm going to try and speed along here but of course you got pause and it will pause with the question so example one 96 48 24 12 describe the sequence okay not sure how you described it a few ways that come to mind for me are you are dividing by two you are halving you are timesing by a half and i like that way of thinking about it is well it kind of looks like you're halving. That's a concept we used to. We're halving something. So it must have something to do with a half. Oh, yes, we're multiplying by a half each time. So we still got this idea of what are we multiplying by. And I, I like to keep that. So rather, what are we multiplying by rather than saying we're dividing by two. And in a few seconds, we'll see why I like that method. Okay, so what are the next three terms in this sequence? Well, if we're halving, we're timesing by half. 12 times a half is 6. Times a half is 3. Times a half, well, 3 over 2, 1 and a half. Either way, I like to keep it as fractions and just leave it as an improper fraction. A bit easier to work with, I find. Because the next term, for example, if you halved it, well, it's just going to be 3 over 4. And then 3 over 8, 3 over 16. See, it's easier if we kept it with those fractions as that instead of one and a half uh, anyway okay so we got our next three terms there they are up there 
determine the formula. Okay, so our formula is Tn equals Ar to the n minus 1. Well, we know what A is. There it is, 96. So we know that Tn equals 96 to the R, sorry, times R to the n minus 1. R, we said, was the ratio. What are we multiplying by? So we could either look at it as T2 over T1, T3 over T2. Two, so we could say, well, it was 48 over 96. That's where we got our half from, because it's halving all the time. So we've got R must be a half from that. So Tn equals 96 times a half to the n minus 1. And there's why I like the half rather than dividing by 2, because we've already got that concept of a half. So therefore, seeing the half here fits in. I don't know. What do you feel about that? Oh, yeah. Maybe you're like, whatever. Uh, uh, okay. So, what is the 10th term? Well, what is the 10th term? Well, T10 equals A R to the N minus 1. And I want you to just put a 9 there. Don't worry about writing 10 minus 1. It makes it look quite cumbersome. And then that we can punch into our calculator and we can get some great answer that, to be honest, I don't have my calculator on hand, so, hmm, that was well planned, right? No, cancel, yes. I don't have my pause button, I don't trust that my pause button works, so you just have to bear with me. There we go, calculator, calculator. Ah, calculator to the rescue. Okay, so we got our calculator here and we got 96 times 1 over 2 to the power of 9. Whew, we got that. 3 over 16, right? So cool. I'm going to add that in here. 3 over 16. Cool. Which term has the value 3 over 64? Okay, which term does have that value? 3 over 64 equals... A, what do we say? A was A, R to the N minus 1. Okay, so cool. So we divide both sides by 96. So we got 3 over 64. And we divide by 96. Okay, that's looking good so far. 1 over 2048 equals a half to the N minus 1. So we don't have a great strategy at the moment to solve this except to kind of try some numbers. Well, a half to the n minus 1, what is 2048 as a power of 2? So if these two could be the same, that would be beautiful. And let's just try some numbers. So 2 to the power of, let's try 11. No, wait, I wanted to try 10. I don't know why. 10, 1024. Okay, so we're not quite there. So it must be higher, 11, 2048. Seems I just <laughs> knew it was going to go already. So this is 2 to the 11. So in other words, this to the 11 means that n minus 1 must be 11, which means that n must be 12. Just checking. Okay, so it, it looks like most of the kind of working backwards ones we've had before. What's our answer? We're trying to find out what n is. And so we go, and it'll be a nice power of 2 or 3 or whatever it is. Okay, onwards, upwards. Let's get rid of the calculator. Oh, beautiful. Example 2. We're given three terms in our sequence, the first three. And we are told, which I didn't say here, is that it is a geometric progression, geometric series, or geometric sequence in this case, actually. So x minus 6 to x minus 6, what do we know about geometric progressions? Well, we know that they go up by a constant ratio. So we know that that times something gives us this. So we're going to times by the same thing to get from one term to the next. So just at this stage, you know, I like to do this. Do you have ideas of how, how you're going to solve this? Okay. 
Let's see, I'm going to start us off here. I'm going to say that if we take the second term and divide it by the first term, it should be the same as if we took the third term and divided it by the second term, 2x minus 6. So let's just see how that worked in one of our previous ones. 10 divided by 5, well that's 2. 20 divided by 10, that's 2. 40 divided by 20, that's 2. So it should always be the same ratio. So there we go. We've got a, an equation with one variable and we can solve it. How are you feeling on solving that equation? Okay, maybe we need a reminder to go. Let's get some sort of LCD. Now LCD is just going to be x minus 6, 2x minus 6. That part there. So... In other words, it's just these two brackets. So if that is our LCD, then so x minus 6, 2x minus 6, x minus 6. Let's move out the way. 2x minus 6. Okay, then we just need to fill in the this bit. So we had 2x minus 6. And we still need to multiply both top and bottom, you see, by 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6. So we've got a 2x minus 6 here. On this side, we had 5x plus 3. We already had the 2x minus 6, so we still need to multiply it by x minus 6. If the denominators are the same, numerators are the same, so 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6 equals... 5x plus 3x minus 6. And so you're going to go, and I'm not going to go through solving this in this video, solve quadratics before, and you're going to get two answers, x equals something or x equals something else. I believe it was minus 6 and 9, but I can't remember all fan, so, and I'm not going to check. Okay, so de determine the formula. Well, once you've got x, you're going to fill in your first three terms and you can go from there. But I don't want to spend too much time here. Okay, so let's, you've got to, an exercise to do. So here's your exercise. That's what I want you to work on. Let's actually take a break here and do the next two examples in the next video. I will see you there. Sc scary, not a good idea, is it? Okay, see you in the next one.